In this video, we are going to compare Substack and MailChimp. These are two brilliant pieces of email marketing software, but they are very different. So in this video, we are going to take a look at the features offered by these two platforms, how they differ, how easy they are both are to use, how much they're going to cost you, and ultimately, which is going to be more suitable for your email marketing needs. Now, if you appreciate this video, please do click the like button, share it with your friends and consider subscribing to our channel. So we're going to start off looking at Substack. So let me just share my screen here. Okay, now Substack launched back in 2017, but it really started to blow up in 2020 and beyond. This is a piece of software which makes it really easy to create a premium list, email list, which subscribers have to pay a monthly fee to receive. So if you're someone who's providing valuable information to your email subscribers and you're looking to monetize that, Substack could be for you. I'm going to show you how it works. Okay, so as you can see here, Substack is completely free to use, but once you start charging your subscribers to receive your emails, Substack is going to take 10% of that, right? So if you've got 100 email subscribers and you're charging them a dollar per month each, that's $10 a month out of the 100 that you make, which Substack is going to charge. That's reasonable enough. Thing is, once you start to really grow, let's say you have 50,000 subscribers charging them $1 each, now you're paying $5,000 a month for Substack, you know, a bit more. A lot more something to really think about we're going to compare how this uh compares to mailchimp a bit later on for now i'm just going to create an account stick a photo in there Okay, so you'll see straight away that we're getting prompted to create uh, a blog complete with a, a Substack URL. Okay, so here's the main dashboard. You'll see here that I can create a new post. So let's go ahead and do that. Question mark. Uh, all right, let's say I wanna publish this. You'll see, that I have the option here to make it available to everyone or only to my paid subscribers, All right? There's also, uh, you can automatically send this post out to your email list, okay? Um, now, if I could only, you could also only send it to your paid subscribers as well. I'm not going to do that. It's going to publish it on the website for now. Okay, so here's my blog post. All right. Now, here's the thing with the Substack blog. You can connect it with your own personal URL. Um, and it is also possible to like make uh, aesthetic changes. but they are very basic. Here we go. Just really the colors and the fonts. Uh,
So, so here, here, here's my blog. And, and the emails that you send out, there is even less customization available with those. You also want to bear in mind that all of this content that you're creating is being hosted by Substack. So not only are you limited with as far as um, the aesthetic changes you can make to your website, you are also limited as far as like the content is technically owned by Substack. If Substack was to go under or disappear, then all of your content would disappear as well. And basically, all the benefits that you would get from hosting your content on your own website, you're not going to get them with Substack. Okay, I want to show an example of a publication, uh, a successful book publication, which is being hosted by Substack. This is Heated. And you'll see here as, as a new user, this is the homepage you land on. Um, and you're automatically prompted to uh, subscribe. And you can choose between the paid subscription, annual or monthly for a different price. Um, I'm not sure what this is. I guess this is if you want to get more benefits, you can pay it. So basically, there are different price levels that you can set using Substack. Um, or you could just choose to be uh, here a, a subscriber for the free content. Alternatively, you can skip this process entirely, and this is just all the free content, all right? And if we take a look at one of the blog posts, see there are a few customizations. You can add links, you can add tweets, and hopefully this is an example here. So you can add a subscribe button. All of these things. Right, so that's basically all I wanted to say about that. Okay, now let's look at MailChimp. Now, MailChimp is essentially one of the email marketing OGs. It's been around since 2001. It's one of the most popular email marketing services. Um, and we're going to take a look at why. Now, MailChimp is purely about email marketing. Uh, you can't create a blog on MailChimp, although you can link it to your blog, which is fairly easy to do. MailChimp is so popular that it's uh, you can link it with pretty much every blogging software under the sun. MailChimp is free to use up to 2,000 subscribers or 10,000 emails sent per month. Okay, After that, you're going to start paying a monthly subscription fee and that's going to go up up and up depending on how many subscribers you have and how many emails you want to send per month so we can take a look at some examples here so let's say we had the uh 50 000 subscribers you're looking at paying 270 dollars per month for the essentials plan or 320 per month for the standard plan. And that's gonna include a few extra features such as send time optimization, email funnels, behavioral targeting, custom templates, things like that. Now you can't charge people to subscribe to your MailChimp emails, at least not just using MailChimp. You're gonna to have to use some sort of other third party software or to do it manually or something, okay? But if you're a halfway decent email marketer, you should be able to make this monthly feedback and a lot more by selling fees and services to your email list. Having said that, you can also do that with Substack for, uh, to your free subscribers and you won't pay a monthly fee at all. So the question is, what are you getting for this monthly fee with MailChimp that you're not getting with Substack. What does MailChimp have to offer that's better? Well, let's dive in and take a look, shall we? So here we are at the main dashboard. And um, this is my personal MailChimp account for my online business. And um, you can see here, we've got the stats for my last email. How was your weekend? Copy five. 
Um, and we can click here to go into much, much more detail as far as the stats for open rate, who opened, how many people, uh, all of these things. But what we're going to do here now, we're going to send an email because I want to show you the, the deep levels of customization you can do with that. So one of the key advantages of MailChimp compared to Substack is that you have far more customization as far as who is receiving the emails. Now, as we saw before with Substack, you can either choose to send to your whole audience or just to your paid subscribers. With MailChimp, we have much deeper options. Okay, so here at the moment, we're sending to my whole list. However, you can see that I've created some segments in the past. So this was a segment that I created for that. How was your weekend uh, email, which I sent. So these are all the people that didn't receive the, uh, the copy for version of that email on 15th of November. Okay. As you can see here, you can also add tags to each of your subscribers. And um, you can see I've added tags based on where the leads came from. Okay, so if I wanted to send an email about female psychology, I might want to choose just to send it to the people who attended that webinar. Okay, and we can go even deeper. Um, if we were to click here, group or new segment, then we have the, the opportunity to create something brand new. So let's have a look. So we can date added, so we can send it only to people who were added after a specific date for a specific date, on a specific date. And then there are many more options here. You can take a look yourself. Uh, MailChimp is smart enough to know the, the, the location of the subscribers in, in many cases. Uh, predicted age range, predicted gender. Uh, it really is once you get to the hang of this software, but the sky's the limit as far as uh, segmentation. Yeah. So I'm going to create a subject line. Now, something else which offers a far more options and creativity is the design of your emails. So here we can see we can select a template. Here are all the basic ones you can choose from. And we also have uh, fancy little themes here as well. These all look incredibly professional. Let's use this one, the Banana Summit. Okay, so we can edit all of this. Uh, we can call it the Joe Alvin Banana Summit. We can change the date. So it's going to be this year. Um, we can also add extra parts of our email. So maybe I want to add. Oh, no, no, no. How do we do it? Maybe I want to, so maybe I want to add another image so we can just drag like this. Okay, maybe I want to add an image of these people. As simple as that. Great, that's in there. Maybe I want to put some text underneath. Uh, look how much fun everyone has at the Banana Summit. Comic Sans, amazing. Size 24, red, old. You know, all of the classic text options. <laughs> amazing. Okay. <laughs> all right. So let's say that's my email. We can send a test to make sure it looks okay. 
Um, here we've added already, you can automate automatically put these in for your social media following. All looking very professional. Now, as far as sending the email and when we send it, we've got a lot of customization options here as well. So if we press this schedule button here, um, you can choose your date. But look at this, send time optimization. So if we click here, send time optimization, it's going to calculate the time that my subscribers are most likely to open their email. So apparently it's at 6 p.m. So that works that out for you. And we'll also have a feature here, time warp. Um, and that's going to send out the email to people at different times, depending on in their time zone when they're most likely to open it. So this is just a short walkthrough of the huge level of customization that you have with MailChimp as far as uh, creating your emails, uh, the data that's at your fingertips as far as your subscribers and the emails that you send. Clearly, this surpasses Substack. Um, you can create automated emails uh, in a range of scenarios. For example, when somebody just signs up to your email list, when somebody buys a product, when somebody has received a, a separate email, so you can you know, stack a, a funnel of emails and, and automate it all. These are all things that you can do with MailChimp, which you cannot do with Substack. So that leads to the question, which of these pieces of software are gonna be right for you? If you're looking to make a, a subscription fee for your email list or for your blog with relative ease and just using one piece of software, then the Substack is a competent platform for which you can do that. It's really easy to use. You can connect it with Stripe, no PayPal connection at the moment, only Stripe. But within a few minutes, you're basically there and um, you have everything it takes to create a premium subscription only email list or blog. Okay, um, you're not gonna pay anything unless you're making profit, uh, but Substack takes gonna take 10% of your profits and there's no cap on that, okay? Um, what you are sacrificing by choosing Substack is a level of control as far as uh, ownership of the content, customization of your email and your blog, and a data as far as who's opening your emails and who isn't. With MailChimp, you're getting email software with all the data and customization and automation that you could ever possibly ask for. Uh, this is for any business, you're gonna get all the data you could possibly need to maximize your sales through email marketing, uh, but that's gonna come at a price of a monthly subscription once you've surpassed 2,000 subscribers or 10,000 emails sent per month. Um, and that monthly fee that you're going to pay for MailChimp, um, that's going to come into play whether you're making sales or not. So, so to sum up, they're both fantastic pieces of email marketing software, which fill very different needs. Hopefully, in this video, I've been able to make it clear which is going to serve your email marketing needs better. If I have, and you appreciated this video, please do click the like button, share this video with your friends, and consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you very much, and goodbye.